Well, good morning, guys, and welcome to the Lake District again. I've just got back from a fantastic week's trip up to Scotland where we were running a workshop. It was absolutely beautiful up there. The weather was absolutely brutal, though. But those are some, sometimes the conditions that actually produce the best results. Anyway, back to today. Come down to the lakes because I really wanted to get out since getting back. And it's a really lovely, calm morning this morning. So I thought I'd come to an area that I haven't ever been to before, to be honest, um, which is probably a bit odd because the Lake District's on my doorstep. But it's actually the Tarn House area. And it's stunning this morning. It's really flat, calm. There's reflections in the little lake down the bottom there. Lovely Scots pines everywhere. So I think I'm going to have a bit of a walk around and see what I can find. But so far, so good this morning. It's nice and and still calm. There's nobody here at all yet. As you can see, there's not much light at the minute though. I didn't, I didn't rush out this morning. I didn't get out get here for sunrise because when I first left this morning, it was just completely clear. No, no cloud in the sky at all. And the further I got into the lakes, actually, it got cloudier and cloudier. So. It's going to be a case of finding something and just waiting for light to happen today because it's, as I say, it's very fleeting as light comes through. But because we're in a bit of a valley here as well, it's going to take a while for the sun to actually reach over the top and, and actually illuminate anything anyway. So I've got a little bit of time to play around and see what I can find. Let's go and have a walk and see what, what's around here to shoot. So as you can maybe see out there, I've just come down to the lock, the lake shore here. I'm calling it a lock. <laughs> Spent a little bit too much time in Scotland last week, I think. Anyhow, we've come down to the lake shore and just out there, the uh, the light is actually starting to hit that group of Scots pines on that little island just out there. So I think what I'm going to try and do, I don't think it's a wide shot. I think I need to get the uh, 70 to 200 on and try and, and kind of zoom in onto that area because there's not a vast amount going on behind at the minute especially up on the hills because it's shrouded in cloud I think I'll try and get that little detail shot first and then maybe if the light opens up any I'll, I'll try a wider shot after that but there's so much around here I'm just looking around and it's absolutely beautiful there's so much and I'm sure there's plenty to work with even this little island here with the reflections just on the lake there Looks really, really nice with that single Scots pine there. It's just a matter of moving around to see which, which is going to work best. But yeah, I'm going to have a little play around with this. Put the 70 to 200 on and I'll walk you through my composition when I get set up. So hopefully you can just about see I've got the trees on that little island there centred in the middle of the frame and I want the reflection just in this lower section here so I've kind of got it halfway across I've tried to get the reflection in the, in the lower half of the frame and the trees actually in the, the upper half now there is a little bit of light starting to appear on the on the hills above there so that actually might work in a wider shot in a minute, but I want to try and capture this, this little scene first. I can't get too much closer in at the minute, because if I go too much further in, I'm going to lose the reflection on the bottom. But I can just feel in the air now that there's a bit of, the, uh, bit of breeze actually starting to build up, so I'm either going to have to be really quick and wait for a lull, or I might have to put a, a ND filter on to smooth out the water just that little bit more, but... Uh, We'll just play with it and see what I can get with it. Yeah, so what I'm actually going to do 
is because the wind's got up slightly and it's it's rippling the top of the, the surface of the water. I'm going to uh, put a 10 stop filter on because the, the sun's got up quite a bit now. Of course it wasn't up at all before and now it's come up and it's really quite harsh. So I'm going to put a 10 stop filter on just to try and smooth as much of the top of the surface of the water out as I can. Not ideal, I would have preferred just a, a natural reflection but of course when the sun comes up what tends to happen is the wind level rises with it and it's creating all these ripples across the top of the water which isn't ideal so a 10 stop filter will just help smooth that nicely out I've had to clean them clean them right off though because obviously last week I was out by the sea and they're covered in salt spray so uh, clean that off give it a go now with a 10 stop filter and looking at that I'm going to get a 10 second exposure at f11 ISO 100 and we'll capture this shot now and if this shot's turned out any good I'll pop it up now So before we move on, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put the wider lens on because there's a bit more light up on the hills now. Put the wider lens on and try and capture a bit more of a more of a pano shot or a 16 by 9 shot because there's more light up on the hills back there now. There's a bit more interest going on. There's lovely light on the foreground interest now. Obviously, I've lost the reflections in the water now, but I think I'll try and get a wider shot and see how that works. So yeah, I think I'm going to have a similar issue again. In that, I love the, uh, I love the wide shot, and there's definitely more interest back there now. But again, I think this, uh, the ripples on the water are just spoiling it a touch for me. I'm going to try 16 by 9 again, I think, and. Yeah, that works better. But I think what I'll do is again, I'll use the 10 stop filter again. Just because it's so bright and it's so harsh. And uh, smooth a bit of that water out again, just to simplify it a bit more. Because I think, to be honest, there's already quite a lot going on here. And I think if you've got that detail left in the water, it's just going to... Um, complicate the scene more than it needs to be I think so yeah 10 stop filter back on and um, Would help if I put the uh, 10 stop on and not the um, ND64, wouldn't it? So, swap that over. <laughs> now, quick tip for you when you're using filters, always, always make sure you clean them before you use them because I've done it before where I've slapped it on thought I've captured the image great and there's a great big streak or mark across your filter so always make sure they're nice and clean
Now, I just wanted to quickly talk about the gear that I'm wearing. I'm sure you noticed I'm standing out this morning. And I've just got a whole load of gear from Revolution Race, who've been kind enough to send me this gear out. I just find it absolutely awesome for what we do as photographers. I love the way the trousers have got these stretchy sort of parts to them so you can move in them really well. And they've also got reinforced parts to the legs, to the seat and everywhere. Really, really nice, as well as ventilation in the sides. Great for what we do. And also the jacket. Tape seams. It's weatherproof. It's, it's windproof. Everything you could really want. So I really, really like this. And they've been really kind enough to give me a discount code for you guys so you can uh, get your own gear. And that discount is Paul15. So if you want to get a discount, head on over to the website and use the discount code Paul15 for yourselves. So what I've done is I've taken my own advice here and actually come for a higher vantage point. Number one, just to see what the overview was like and number two, to escape from the hordes of people. <laughs> it always happens, doesn't it? You get set up and everything, there's nobody here, then all of a sudden there's busload of land. So uh, yeah. So I've come for a higher elevation just to get a better overview of the area. And there's some stunning scenes. I mean, the light, as I say, the light's not doing anything great, but I think it's going to be one of those days where you just have to wait it out and see what happens with the light. I mean, this, this area here, I think if it gets a bit of light on it later on, if the uh, sun actually breaks through this thick cloud, and I think if these tri trees and everything light up, it'll actually be quite a nice scene. So what I've noticed as well is there's lots of light hitting the peaks in the background there. So what I can do is put the telephoto lens on and just pick out bits of details of the landscape, the wider landscape, until I actually get some direct light on the subject that I actually want. So it's not wasted time. I can always be photographing something. I think if you come to an area like this, there's always something to photograph. You just actually need to stop and find something. And sometimes just stopping and not even using your camera, just sitting down and observing the whole scene and watching where light falls, watching what happens in the landscape and just enjoying your surroundings. I think all too often we, we look at the the landscape through the viewfinder and don't actually appreciate what we've got around us. Whereas I think if you actually take the time to appreciate what's going on around you, I think subjects and compositions will actually stand out to you a lot better. Right, so this is the reason why I actually came up here. So what I've got going on is this spit of land here just curves round to the right. So I've got the, the lake coming in from the left and it also pools round in here as well, but it this little spit of land curves round to the right and it's got some really nice pine trees. I don't know whether you can see on the back of this camera here. Really nice pine, a group of pine trees on here. Then you've got this both sides left and right. Now the left I'm not overly keen on because it's been logged and there's quite a bit of mess and, and debris lying across in that forest on the other side, what's left of it. Um, but the right hand side is really, really nice. Just a shame that that hasn't been left the same way, to be honest, but there's not a lot I can do about that. Looking beyond that, you could be struggling to see if I can darken this down a touch. You see the, the clouds aren't really doing a great deal. There's texture in them, but there's not a great lot going on. And then you've got the mountains off in the distance behind there. So that's the scene I'm looking at. I'm just kind of waiting for this area here to be illuminated and get some direct light, light on the scene just to lift the whole image and uh, give it a bit of interest. Now, I must have been waiting around for about 20 minutes and of course I didn't capture the moment that the light actually hit because it was ever so fleeting. It's so socked in here that there's just glimpses of the light coming through every now and then. But that's what can make for some of these really sort of dramatic and really nice conditions but anyway I hung around for about 20 minutes and I actually managed to get that section down there lighting up and it worked out really well I'll pop the image up now for you
So as I was up here getting that wide shot down there, I also noticed below me there was a lovely birch tree and it's got a lovely shape down there. So I've put the 7200 on and I'm just picking out the detail of it down below. And the nice thing about being up here is, is that it's against the water. So it's almost like having fog behind it where you've got a flat scene behind it. So it's separated really nicely from the background. There's just nothing in the way. It's a nice clean shot. And that's the good thing about gaining this little bit of elevation. It allows me to look down on the subject and be able to separate it out really nicely. Right, the only way I can show you how this is looking is to handhold. So I apologize if there's shake. But as you can see, just down here, there's the, there's the birch tree. Now I've got a little bit of the grass, which ideally I could do without, I've put it into portrait orientation because I want it as a square crop. I'm probably gonna cut this out about there and have it as a square crop and fill the frame full of that tree. But I really like the way it's looking. It's got a lovely shape about it. And as you can see, there's nothing behind it apart from the, the gray water. So I think it'll balance out really well. And I think that'll just have a really nice empty background.